going to do a recap of the final three episodes of the show Alice in Borderland. Don't forget to watch our part 1 and 2 videos, if you haven't watched it yet. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The sixth episode starts with a flashback to the time when Beach was established. Hatter was a veteran at the game, but he was tired of living in that hopeless world, so he decided to create a utopia with a gunny. And that's how he created the beach. Back in the present, Arisa wakes up after a heavy night of drinking when Yusagi forces him to get up. Then, they begin questioning different members of the beach to get more information about the world. Meanwhile, a guy tells them the story of those who tried to leave the country, but were killed by lasers. Some people even believe that aliens put chips in their heads, and they are doing all of this for their entertainment. After getting no real leads, Yusagi and Arisu agree that collecting cards are probably the best strategy. Yusagi goes to check the weapons depot, and Arisa tries to question a couple of girls, but they just run away from him. That's when he hears gunshots nearby. He goes to check and sees the militants leaving a dumpster. Orisu investigates the dumpster and finds dozens of bodies in it. That's when the white-haired guy named Chishia tells him that this is the reality of Utopia. Chishia and Kuina take Orisu to the terrace, and he tells Orisu that things will get messy after Hatter's death. He has a plan that can save them, but he will need Orisu's help for that. That evening, Hatter leaves to play a game because his visa is expiring. He locks up all the cards before leaving, and the members cheer him as he leaves in his car. His arena is in the same market where his old host club used to be. The following day, and is dissecting a dead member to see if he has any chips in his brain. That's when she is called to the meeting room. Orisu is also called there by Chishia, and militants are already there. Inside the meeting room, Orisu sees Hatter's dead body on the table. The militants claim that he died during a game. A guni is there, and his right-hand man Niragi, wants everyone to elect a guni as their new leader. He asks for a vote, but no one votes in favor of a guni. That's when Niragi and the other militants threaten to kill everyone if they didn't vote in a guni's favor. So, all the members hesitantly vote in favor of a guni, and he becomes the new boss of the beach. After the meeting, Chishiya tells Arisu and Yusagi his plan. He explains how the cards are kept inside a safe, and the code of that safe is inside a black envelope. The envelope is only opened by the boss, and then it's sealed again. Chishiya wants Arisa to steal the cards, and then they can all run away. He claims that he knows the safe combination, and he will tell Arisa the code when he is next to the safe. Yusagi thinks this plan is too risky, but Arisa convinces her that it is their only option. So, when Aguni gathers all the members into the lobby to give his first speech as the boss, Arisa goes to the boss suite. Chishia is keeping an out while Orisa finds the safe in a cupboard. That's when Chishia explains that the code is the same as the impression made by boss's ring. So, the code is 8022, and Orisa tries the code, but it doesn't work. He keeps trying it, but then the militants catch him. Chishia sold him out, and Orisu is beaten by Niragi, who ties Orisu to a chair, and leaves him to die when his visa expires. Chishia, on the other hand, tells Kuina that he used Arisu as bait to find the location of the real safe. He explains how Aguni was staring at a painting when they went in to catch Arisu. He believes the envelope had a sketch of the deer painting instead of the safe combination. Then Chishia just goes in and steals the cards from the safe using the code 8022. He is getting out of the beach resort with Kuina when she tells him that she feels bad for Arisu. Chishia doesn't care, but that's when lasers come upon the premises of the beach and he can't leave. Right then, the screens in the house notify them that a game is about to begin, and a Ten of Hearts card comes up on the screen. The loudspeakers ask the players to gather in the lobby and get their phones. There's also a dead body of a girl in the lobby. The game is called The Witch Hunt. The game is simple, they have to find the witch who killed this girl and burn the witch in the fire inside the courtyard. They have two hours to do this, or they'll all die. People gather in the lobby, and the dead girl's best friend, Asahi, is also there. The dead girl's name is Momoka. That's when Anne, who was a forensic expert in Tokyo, shows the bullet that she found in Hatter's body. She explains how someone from the beach murdered Hatter because the markings on the bullet are the same as their guns. That's when Aguni announces that if the witch didn't come forward, he'll kill every beach member who isn't part of the militants. Hearing this, everyone starts to run, and Yusagi goes to find Arisu. Meanwhile, Niragi starts killing people and guides the militants in the path of mass murder. Aguni is watching this massacre. 
He was an ex-SDF officer who wasn't always a monster. He used to be Hatter's best friend in the world. But now, he is overseeing all this bloodshed. Niragi is especially enjoying this, and he even goes to the terrace and starts killing people with a sniper. To get everyone out of the building, he orders Samura to start a fire in the basement. Kuina and Chishia are watching all of this from the security camera's room. That's when Kuina spots and looking for something in the dark and goes to investigate. And tells Kuina that she is looking for the glue to make fingerprint gel to get the fingerprints from the murder weapon. Meanwhile, Yusagi and Asahi are looking for Arisu. That's when the guy from the tag game comes there to help. His name is Kodai, and he searches the rooms with his friend. At the terrace, Chishia goes to Niragi and tells him that the murderer is one of the executive members, so he plans to kill all of them. Niragi tries to shoot him, but Chishia uses a makeshift flamethrower to burn Niragi. On the other hand, and is going to Momoka's dead body with Kuina when Samura blocks their path. Kuina asks him to go while she starts fighting Samura. She uses her athleticism and good technique to evade Samura's sword. Kuina was once a boy who was a black belt in martial arts. He was taught by his father. When he decided to change his gender, his family disowned him. However, when she went to see her sick mother after years, her mother embraced her. That's what gives Kuina the will to live. On the other hand, Samura was a shut-in blogger who was always sad that the modern world has no adventure in it. So, when he came to this world, the games made him feel alive for the first time. He decided never to leave this place. They both start fighting like crazy. Kuina uses her martial arts to take him down, but he gets back up. He throws bottles on the ground and spreads broken glass on the floor to stop Kuina, who's barefoot. He then attacks her, but Kuina doesn't care about broken glass. She dodges his sword and lands a karate chop. She then finishes Samura with a deadly punch. Orisu on the other hand, wakes up after seeing his dead friends in his dreams. Yusagi is on the fourth floor, and she hears Orisu. They all find the door to his room, but it's locked. Just then, some militants attack them. Meanwhile, Kodai and Asahi take down the attackers. Yusagi frees Orisu and hugs him. After getting free, Orisu starts thinking about this puzzle. He explains that the heart games are not straightforward, so militants can't just win by killing everyone. He is confused by how this game of betrayal started right after Hatter's death. He eventually tells others that he knows who the witch is. In the lobby, Aguni asks the militants to kill the few beach members that are still alive. But some of his militants are tired of the bloodshed. That's when Orisa comes there. He explains how he was tied during the time frame when Momoka was killed, so he can't possibly be the witch. He wants Aguni to help him find the witch, but Aguni starts beating up Arisu. That's when people begin to think that Aguni is the witch. Aguni himself claims to be the witch and asks the others to kill him, but Arisa stops them. He explains that Aguni is not the witch who killed Momoka, but he's the one who killed Hatter. Arisa knows that because he sees the same regret in Aguni's eyes that he felt after killing his friends in the heart game. Arisu explains that Aguni wasn't the enemy who was opposing Hatter. Still, he was the friend who was keeping Hatter's enemies in control. To stop dangerous guys like Naragi, Aguni pretended to hate Hatter. Orisu also believes that Hatter did something so horrible that his best friend Aguni had to kill him. That's when Aguni remembers how Hatter established the beach to provide hope to the players. However, Hatter slowly became a dictator who made the third rule simply to kill anyone who stood against him. So last night, when Hatter came back from his game, Aguni asked him to end the beach. Hatter had lied about how all the cards can lead to someone's escape from the world. Aguni told Hatter to end this lie, but Hatter pulled a gun on Aguni. Aguni was shocked to see this, and he instinctively shot Hatter. However, he later found out that Hatter had no bullets in his gun, and he never intended to kill Aguni. This broke Aguni's heart, and he decided to end the beach and kill every one of its members. Orisa thinks that the game master used Aguni's anger and made this game so that Aguni will kill everyone himself. Aguni hears this and beats up Orisu again. He also admits that it's all true, and this shocks all his militants. They are speechless after knowing that they were killing their friends for no reason. Orisa tells everyone that the game could have been won without killing anyone because the witch is Momoka. Just then, and comes there and confirms that Momoka stabbed herself with the knife. People try to burn Momoka, but Aguni stops them. He wants everyone to die, and to distract him, Asahi says out loud that she's the game dealer. 
Suddenly a laser comes down from the sky and kills Asahi. No one knows what happened. Right then, a badly burnt Naragi shows up there and starts shooting the people in the lobby. As he tries to kill Arisu, Aguni takes the bullet in Arisu's place and also takes down Naragi. With only three minutes remaining, the remaining members burn Momoka's body in the fire. Then they escape the burning resort. There, they receive the message that the game has ended. Meanwhile, Chishia collects the Ten of Hearts card that appeared after the game finished. Orisa found a camera near Asahi's dead body. He and Yusagi check the past footage, and they find out that Asahi and Momoka were two high schoolers. They came to this empty world, and they were hired by someone who asked them to become game dealers. There's also footage of the girls going into a subway tunnel where they enter a hall. The hall has giant offices where workers are monitoring the games and the players. They are enjoying and laughing as players are dying around them. The footage ends with Asahi and Momoka explaining how they feel bad for killing others to survive. Orisa decides to find the offices with Yusagi. He goes to the tunnel and even finds the door. However, the door is open and inside he sees that the workers are all dead in their offices. Chishia and Kuina also arrive there. Chishia explains how he found the place by using the drawing that he found in the tagger's pocket. Right then, the screens around them light up, and an announcement starts. Mira, who is also an executive member of the beach, is on the screen, and she announces that the game masters have a surprise. The surprise is that new games with face cards will begin soon. Orisu and the others go to the city where airships are displaying giant face card banners. The show ends with Orisu pointing to the banners as his ultimate target. And that wraps up our recap of the last three episodes of Alice in Borderland. Feel free to drop a comment below as to what we should recap next. Thank you for watching.